and welcome to St. Peter the Fisherman. Uh, my name is Father Peter, and I'm the rector here at St. Peter the Fisherman. Uh, our service will begin on page 491. You can follow along there for portions of the prayer and uh, the burial service. Um, you also see that there, you should have received a bulletin when you came in with the order of service. So do be conscious of that. I want to welcome you as we celebrate the life of Skip Cole. Um, it's just a, it's, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful day to remember um, his life, his legacy, to see sons, daughters, grandsons, granddaughters, and I believe even great-grandsons, too, which is pretty um, amazing. So we'll begin in a few moments, but just take this moment to spend some time thanking the Lord for the life of Skip Cole. We'll begin at 1030.
Please rise. resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my waking, he will raise me up. And in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if what we have life, we are alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die... We are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, Grant that your servant, Skip, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who is with you and the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's holy word. A reading from Ecclesiasticus. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate a time for war, and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on human race. 
He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can follow what God has done from beginning to end. The word of the Lord. You'll find in your bulletin, Psalm 23, we would like you to all gather and read it together, if you don't mind. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lay down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me to righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, though thou art with me, thy rod, the shadow of death. I will fear. Surely the goodness and mercy shall fall on me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from 2 Timothy. I would like to invite Tom Cole forward and Todd to read our Old Testament, our New Testament readings. Good morning. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, not only to me, but also to all who have longed for this appearing. From Hebrews 2. 14 and 15. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please stand and join me as we sing this hymn and then read the gospel.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that? I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I would like to invite Walt Davenport to um, lead us in open sharing here at the pulpit, Mike. I'm John Cole, Skip's brother. Walt Davenport got a plane canceled in Charlotte last night and could not make it here. Walt was a dear, dear friend of my brother. I'm going to read the eulogy that he had sent down for us, for me to read. Let me explain how I know Skip. I I began my career in the waste and recycling industry at the age of 16. I worked for a company named Arizona Biochemistry that held a contract to collect residential waste for the city of Troy, New York. I dumped my first residential, yeah, I dumped my first residential refuse can into a truck more refuse truck. That truck was manufactured by the Cole family where Skip was the national sales manager. About six or seven years later, I met Skip working for another refuse hauling company, BFI, Brown and Ferris Industries, which is now Republic Industries. That is when our friendship began. As time passed, Skip was living in Richmond, Virginia, and I was living in Maryland. When we met and went we would meet and contact the, uh, and we would meet and connect at the refuse industry conferences and talk about our families' waste recycling business. Our mutual friends and other interests, especially in the sport of NASCAR. As you may already know, cocktails were an important ingredient at these convention at, at, at these conversations. Chuck Moore, Skip's family business, sponsored a race team that com- competed in the Daytona 500. Skip brought many customers, family members, and employees and friends to watch their car compete in that highly visible national event. Skip loved the Daytona 500 and all the parties and activities associated with the races. One year, Skip rented a large house right on the beach that slept 19 people. Well, the morning we were scheduled to check into the house, Skip and I made an alcohol run. We loaded two shopping carts full of liquor, beer, wine, mixers for our stay. Later that day, when signing the contract with the realtor she happened to mention, 
you know there is no alcohol allowed in this house. <laughs> I looked at Skip, and he looked at me, and we both looked out at Skip's car, which was loaded with all these spirits. Skip then turned to the realtor and says, no problem. <laughs> Within five or 10 minutes after their departure, the beer was set up and all ready for action. A few, a few days later, the realtor returned to see how things were going, and he saw, and he saw the bar, and we were busted. <laughs> Nonetheless, to say, Skip made the, made the, the do, made, uh, nonetheless, Skip made the do not rent list. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Skip loved the beach and started way back when he would travel south and visit his grandparents in New Simona Beach. We, he made many trips to New Simona Beach with, uh, with his family on vacation. He loved it so much that he and Judy bought a condo here in New Simona. They shared their time between their house in Richmond, Virginia and their condo in New Simona Beach. After Skip decided to retire from the waste and recycling industry, he started a new career. Beginning the ultimate, being the ultimate salesman, he decided to obtain a real estate license uh, and sell him property both in Richmond and in New Simona Beach area, teamed with his good friend, Mac. They were, were appropriately called the Beach Boys. <laughs> That's Mac and my brother, Skip. All right. All right. <clears throat> Since I moved to New Simona, I have had the opportunity to spend time with Skip and what wonderful times those were. What I want to explain is Walt moved to New Simona. I didn't move to New Simona. Okay. All right. uh, there was no one that loved to party more than Skip. He was a fantastic entertainer, dancer, cook, and there were no one who loved wearing a tuxedo more than him. One of his first questions would be, what time does the party start? As I sit back and thought about writing the, this eulogy, I thought about many of my friends' quali great qualities. Among them are, number one, kindness. Skip was always kind and looking to help those in need. He volunteered in many service organizations, looking out at the number of people that are here to honor Skip today. This is a testimony that the kindness that Skip showed to everyone in the community. Number two, loving. He was surrounded by love and gave it. He loved Judy, his children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, cousins, friends, and his brother John. That's me. <laughs> okay. Uh, he always spoke so proudly about his whole family. Number three, quick wit. Skip always had something funny to say in his own dry sense of humor. Remembering back to the day I moved into my completely furnished condo, he came over to help me unload. I had rented a U-Haul, and his first comment when we opened the back door was, did you buy another condo, or that, is this what it's all about? We had enough stuff in the truck to fill two storage units, at which he reminded me often. Four, graciousness. Skip always opened his home to family and friends. He hosted many cocktail parties, dinners, and a place for someone to rest their head. His dinner table was always set with sterling silver, fine china, cloth napkins, that was a must, uh, candlesticks, flowers, with crystal alcohol decanters nearby and always set with a smile. 
He was a true Southern gentleman. Number five, faithfulness. Lastly and most importantly was Skip's faithfulness and commitment to God. Skip was a man of faith. The Lord never said that the road would be easy, but he did say the arrival would be worthwhile. The last few years of Skip's life were not easy for, for Skip, Judy, or his family and friends, but that his arrival in the Lord's arms has been worthwhile. Skip, you know, Skip, you are now with your parents, grandparents, Hal, your buddy Jeff, Buzz, Matt, and a few more. Rest in peace, my dear friend, and know that you always be loved. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to catch my breath for a second, and then I want to say a couple words about Skip. That's me, me talking, not Wall. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell the Bermuda Bell story. If you don't know what a Bermuda Bell is, uh, it is a uh, round, chrome-looking dome thing that fits underneath the carriage in Bermuda, in the Bermuda Islands, has a plunger on the top, and when the, uh, to activate the Bermuda Bell, you put your foot on the floorboard and that stomp on it, goes ding, ding, ding. It's the Bermuda answer to a horn. So, uh, in 1950, my parents, our parents, bought a 1950 Ford, Ford or sedan, and Skip was 14. You could get your driver's license at 14 in Virginia at that time. And so Skip was very excited about that. In fact, he would take me for rides up and down the, the road into different events and like that. About a year or two after into the car, with, he, back in those days, you got excited about doing little spiffy things to the car, like putting a foxtail on the antenna or spinner hubcaps on the, you know, and you would buy these accessories at a mail order catalog, one being like J.C. Whitney. Well, Skip was thumbing through the catalog one day and saw this Bermuda belt. He said, John, this is a fantastic idea. I'm going to order this Bermuda belt and we can put it on mom and dad's car. <laughs> Great. So a few weeks later, it arrives in the mail. And Skip says, John, can you help me put this thing on? I, no problem. So we peel back the floor mat. I crawl under the, well, then, then we have to drill a couple of holes to mount the, the bell and then a big round hole to put the plunger in. So then I get under the car and I'm holding up the, the Bermuda bell and he's putting the screws in and all like that and then put the plunger back in and then put the floor mat back over so you really don't know that the bell is there because it's covered by the floor mat. So he was always happy by going, driving up and down the road, going ding dong, ding dong, ding dong with the Bermuda bell. <laughs> so that's the that story. Thank you. And we would love to hear any stories that uh, anybody has about Brother Skip. I'm Judy's daughter. I'm sure you probably didn't notice that, but um, <laughs> um, I'm reading for um, Brenda Frank, longtime family friend, and she wasn't able to be here either. Okay. All right. So this is Brenda, not me. When Judy told me the sad news of Skip's passing in the middle of the night, unable to sleep, I reflected on our friendship that coveted, oh, that covered two centuries and more than 60 years. What came to mind as a steady stream of thoughts turned into words was an old ad that read, nobody doesn't like Sarah Lee. We can all agree, nobody doesn't like Skip Cole. Throughout his life, his love of life shined through. Act one, the Antiques Road, circa, Antiques Road Show, circa 1960. That's what the front yard of 147 Stephen Street on a bright sunny day, 
in early fall look like at the Hillcrest Duplex Apartments in New Britain, Connecticut, oh, New Britain Court, sorry, uh, where young, many young couples uh, started married life. The movers couldn't carry the furniture up to the second floor of our four unit garden apartments any faster than what kept pouring out of the moving van, like water gushing from a broken pipe. Why do they have such old furniture, I wondered, as I peered out of my first floor window from my now called mid-century furnished home. Hey, who is that tall, good-looking guy? Surely he isn't the owner of all this old stuff. Well, he was, and in short order, I learned their old people's furniture had a description, antiques. Bursting at the seams of the Coles mahogany tea wagon found temporary housing among my Danish modern furniture. We did the neighborly thing as the Coles two-bedroom, one-bath, 1,000-square-foot apartment couldn't hold all of the furniture they brought with them from their home in Virginia. So began a 63-year friendship with Skip and Katie Cole and our neighbors Don and Sally Risberg. We three couples bonded as, our, as did our infant children. We became more like family than just friends. The six of us in our early 20s with our babies all the same age were building the foundation for our lives. Through these in, Incredible friends, I learned to be a wife and mother and came to understand the world of antiques. Being that this was just our starting point, we three families moved in three different directions. We caught up with Skip and Katie and their then two children in Virginia when we traversed the Northeast Corridor, Northeast Corridor from Florida, where we then lived in Connecticut to visit, oh, live to Connecticut to visit family. They were excited to show us their new home, which they hadn't closed on yet. So in the dark of night, we drove up to a beautiful colonial home. Colonial home. Seeing that it was locked, Skip jimmied open the window. We all climbed up, and my husband and I owned the distinction of being their first drop-in visitors. Can you imagine doing that in 2023? Act two. We all stayed at the Senior Coles Antique Home in Richmond. Mr. Coles Sr. had a book, The Sale Begins When the Customer Says No. I thought that was so prophetic. To this day, I rely on it, even in friendly conversation. I believe Skip used it as a stepping stone to his success, too. Skip loved life and gripped enjoyment like a garden, uh, excuse me, soaking up a cool rain shower on a warm summer day. He didn't waste a good time. This young, strapping young man, I think Skip wrote this, but this young, strapping young man would leave home many times before dawn, briefcase at hand, looking every bit like the personification of a Brooks Brothers ad. Anyone seeing him would never, would never guess that good-looking guy with success written all over him would soon be climbing up into, into and driving off in a spanking new garbage truck built by the family business, the Trucks More Packer. Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work I go. Whether it was enjoying a hot fudge sundae from A.C. Peterson's or a cool alcoholic drink, he, he savored the life, and, and we were all fortunate to have shared along with... with his soft voice and infectious laugh. All right, act three, it's almost over. <laughs> life made a turn and Judy came into his life. All right. They spared no time wondering what to do. For over 20 years, he and Judy shared their love of exploring the world and building an international network of friends. If there was a trip, a party, or a family gathering, count them in and you could count on them bringing, bringing gaiety, gaiety, sorry, gaiety with them. His smile tells it all. Skip made the world a better place and I'm so happy he was part of mine. Friend of Frank. I lucked out with the stepdad as great as Skip. Well, thank you for sharing. I'd like to invite Jim Spencer to lead the homily. Father Jim. Let's pray. Whoa. <laughs> God grant us a serenity to accept the things we can't change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Well, Skip, you gotta be pleased. Let me put it on the line here. This is one heck of a party. You're packing out, this is like Christmas here. I mean, Judy, it's, it, I mean, 
thank you for allowing me to do this. I mean, it, it's just, it's wonderful. You know, it, it's interesting. The first reading from Ecclesiasticus is, you know, it's time to live and a time to die and all the times back and forth. And I started to think about, you know, that scripture. And I don't know whether you know this or not, but in the Greek language, in the Greek language, there's two words for time. There's the word chronos, which is like, you know, it's six o'clock at night. And then there's the word kairos, which means special time. In a way, time and life is measured in chronos, but it's lived in kairos. And what you guys read and, and talked about and stuff, that was definitely kairos. That was special time. I mean, for me, I, I, when I think about, uh, about Skip, you know, I mean, it's, it's some of the little things, you know, that, that went on that, that were amazing. You know, I mean, I, I remember being down in hospice and, and some of you guys singing those songs that you made up before they went to Disney. You know, uh, it, it's, it's the stories of the Bermuda Bell. It's the, the, the stories of all that. And for me, I'll be up front with you, for me, it was... That dang studly bow tie he always wore. I mean, what, was that his answer to coming to church but not a tuxedo? I mean, I mean, it was, it was those little things. It was, you know, when he'd go out the door and he'd want to hug me. I mean, he was tall, I'm short. I always got my nose in his pit. I mean, it was not fun. But, but it was, it's all that stuff. It's all that stuff, those little things but also the big things of his character. You know, you described so well so much of his character, you know, his kindness. and that. To me, the one thing that always, he had a sense of hospitality. I think that's what gave him the ability to, well, to entertain. Because it was, he wasn't doing it where he was trying to prove anything. It was doing where he wanted to show how much he loved everybody. I can tell you that over the years, especially near the end when I've talked to him, you know, I mean, he loved his family. Judy, he adored you. I mean, he, he, and he loved every one of you guys. He might not have done it exactly the way you wanted it every time, because we never do. But, um, but he really did love in the deepest way. And, and, and it wasn't where I heard him talk. It was where I actually felt him feel what he felt about each and every one of you. I mean, I, I'm just telling you what my experience is. You know, I, 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 a Kairos moment. Kairos moments that happen. Kairos moments that I think he wants to orchestrate happen today at the Yacht Club. I'll tell you that right now. I mean, if you want to talk a little bit of uh, alcohol consumption, you're probably still driving back from that condo over there. You know... Judy, I, I think you must have picked the gospel, but it's really interesting that you picked the gospel, you know, from John chapter 40. You know, basically it says, you know, don't worry about anything, you know. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. What a perfect gospel for a realtor. I mean, think about it, you know, in my father's house or many, you know, I mean, but, but it's funny because when he says, Jesus says that, he says this, he says, if it were not so, what I, I have told you, in other words, that the Lord wants you to know, hey, there's, you know, there's room there. There's, there's room for you to all come in. It's, 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 a, it's a good thing. And, and by the way, you know, it's not just where there's room for you because where I'm going, I'm going to come and get you and bring you to me. So you got an Uber driver and reservations. <laughs> but the part about the gospel that really hit me that I've never thought of before in all the years that I've done ministry is that where he says, in my father's house are many rooms. But if you think about it, you know what? Think about the story of Jesus, you know, God in the form of Jesus coming into this world. And where is he born? In a stable. Why? There's no room in the inn. But in my father's house, there are many rooms. One of the characteristics that I think your brother had, your 
friend, your uncle, your family, your husband, you know, your father. It was He had a sense of grace. He had a sense of grace that was powerful, that was palpable. He had a sense of grace because he knew the grace of God. And it was in that that all of a sudden that sometimes he could navigate through things. Probably not perfectly, because we never do. But he had a sense of grace at every turn to move through it because he experienced the grace of God. And the grace of God is so overpowering that in God's wisdom, he sent his son to say, in my father's house, there's many rooms, and I'm going to pick you up, and I'm going to bring you there. And I had told you if it wasn't going to be so, so just get clear. It's so. I'm going to be there for you, and I'm going to bring you home. Skip had a long, good life, a powerful life, a life filled with a lot of joy, a life filled with moments that just, uh, you know, ripped a new one into this world. And it's that that we celebrate today, a life that's been changed and not ended. And it's all through the power of God that we pray. Amen. you please stand and turn to page 496. Uh, we're going to affirm our common faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Page 496. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in these intercessions. You will see the portions that are in italics. Those are for you to say, and I will say those that are non-italicized. For our brother Skip, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Skip and dry the tears of those who weep. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. You raise the dead to life. Give to our brother Skip eternal life. You promise paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with your Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all of your saints. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our brother, Skip, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism, grant that his death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another.
we continue on page 361 for our prayer. Um, you may be seated. There will be a special music played for the, uh, the bringing forward of the gifts. portion of our service, which is Holy Communion. This table is open to all those who know and love the Lord. Um, it doesn't belong to the Episcopal Church. It is open to everyone who knows and loves Jesus. If it's not your tradition or you've never been here before or experienced it, um, but would like to receive uh, bread and wine, simply come forward and put your right hand over your left, and uh, we will. the minister will We'll place the bread uh, in your palm. You may wish to hold that or you can or, or consume it. If you hold on to it, you can then dip it in the chalice as the wine goes past you. Or you may consume the bread and wait for the chalice to come and just uh, gent gently guide the, the chalice to your lips to take a, a drink from the wine. Please stand, turning to page 361. I also forgot to say, if you don't feel comfortable receiving communion but would still like a prayer blessing, please come forward and simply uh, cross your arms across your chest and we would be delighted to pray a prayer of blessing over you. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens." 
Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin, offering himself in obedience to you. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, saying, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all of your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrifice for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. bread of life. They who come to me shall not hunger. They who believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to the
from a distance the world looks blue and green and the snow-capped mountains white from a distance the ocean meets the stream and the eagle takes to flight stand. Turning to page 498, we'll offer up our post-communion prayer together. Page 498, it's the prayer you'll find at the bottom of that page. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love, you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet, Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, 
neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now a prayer of commendation over our brother Skip. You'll find that continue on page 499. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. And pain are no more, neither sigh nor life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even in the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with his saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, no sighing but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Skip. Acknowledge, we beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. And now receive this benediction, this Easter resurrection benediction. Now may the peace, now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.